So I know what you're going to say. He's brand new on YouTube. He's got one video, not that many views. And already his next upload is taking more than a week. Well, you know what? Screw you. I have a life. You can get one too. Anyways, welcome to the Alberti Base, which is the name of this channel. Um, if you're new here, I may or may not explain it later for those of you who are not music literate. It's something Mozart used a lot. Um, anyways, today I'll be proving an Arduino can do really anything electronics-wise by doing the one thing that in my last video I said it couldn't be able to do. So no, I won't be electrocuting myself with this. This is completely electrocution safe. That's right. For those of you who were waiting anxiously to see it, I will be shocking myself today, the things we do for views. Anyways, um, in typical fashion, I'll also be explaining exactly how I'm shocking myself. So um, if you're into that, pay attention, because here we go. So to shock myself with an Arduino, we'll need a basic understanding of three things. Uh, electronic transistors, which are these tiny parts. Um, the electromagnetic effect, which I'll explain in a moment and electronic transformers, which has nothing to do with Optimus Prime, and they look like these, I'll also be explaining them in a moment. Let's get started with that. This is an electronic transistor. That's what it looks like. Be careful not to mistake those for something that looks exactly like transistors, but that isn't a transistor. How do you do that? I have no idea how you do that. Anyways, this is the symbol for a transistor in an electronic circuit. It sounds kind of complicated, it seems kind of complicated, it is very much freaking complicated. Um, but for today's purposes, don't worry, because all you need to know is that a transistor can be used as a switch. The transistor, as you can see there, has three pins called collector, base and emitter. Um, the way it works is very simple. When a current flows from the base to the emitter, it allows the current to flow from the collector to the emitter. Uh, draw that in an example. Once again, you can see that when I push some electricity from the base to the emitter, which is always an open path, so no resistance there, only then can a current throw from the collector to the emitter. This allows me to make a very small current power something very big, powered by a battery or a car battery or even a wall plug or something, by only using the small tiny current that an Arduino can output. So it's basically, as I said, an electronic switch. The second thing you need to understand is the electromagnetic effect. It sounds longer than the name transistor, but it's much easier, so if you were worried about that part of the video, this one is easy. The electromagnetic effect says the following. When I have a wire, such as this one, and electricity is flowing through the wire, then a magnetic field is induced around the wire. For a wire as small as this one, it will be a fairly weak magnetic field, but that's why you can wind the wire around itself, like I did here, with several wires, and that sort of makes the magnetic field stack upon itself, so it increases the strength of your magnet. So an industrial electromagnet used in like cranes and stuff, um, those have like thousands upon thousands of windings and they get powered by an immense amount of electricity that will simply burn my wires because of the high current that's flowing through them. Um, but anyways, this is the electromagnetic effect. The electromagnetic effect also works in reverse. Although in reverse, it's not quite that simple. But when I have a magnet, I can induce a current in a wire such as this one. Only, um, it's not as easy as just placing a magnet next to the wire. Because if placing a magnet next to a wire could just give off electricity, and I invented that, well, I'd be a billionaire and South Africa wouldn't have the thing called load shedding. Um, but it's not that simple. Because you see, for um, current to flow, current is basically the motion of electrons. And so by inducing a magnet field or bringing a magnet field close to the wire, I'm moving the electrons or disturbing the electrons wirelessly with the magnetic force. And um, so when I use this magnetic force to disturb the electrons, there's a brief flow of electricity, but if the magnet is stationary after that, well, then there's no electricity flowing unless I'm powering it by a battery. So for me to induce a constant electric current with the magnet, well, what I need to do is I need to woo, 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 like move the magnet around, constantly disturbing those electrons that are lying in this wire and pushing them with the magnetic field through the circuit. So I'm basically constantly whoosh, whoosh, like sweeping a broom or something, um, pushing the electrons through the circuit and that allows electricity to flow. I can make more electricity flow by making the magnet move faster or I can use a stronger magnet. 
um, that will also create some stronger electricity coming out of the points of the wire or the ends of the wire. Fun fact, all generators also work this way. Um, a gasoline powered engine produces a rotation within the generator and attached to whatever part is rotating is a magnet. And this magnet is brought close to a spool of wire within the generator. And when the engine starts, this magnet starts rotating and moving. And this movement like whooshes the electrons through the wire. It's constantly pushing those electrons, creating electricity in the wire. And with an industrial power station, it's basically the same thing, just on a much larger scale. And they use steam to move a turbine and not exactly gasoline. The third thing you need to understand is an electric transformer. No, I don't mean Optimus Prime. I don't understand those either. Um, no, the electric transformer I'm talking about looks like this or several other variations of this. This is out of some power supply I broke open a long time ago. And what this is, is it's two coils wound closely to each other. It's one coil over here and one coil over here and those are close to each other or basically next to each other or within each other. And this thing operates on the electromagnetic effect we've just described. So, current flows through the first coil, and a current flowing through the first coil induces a magnetic field around the first coil. But the second coil is right next to the first coil, so the magnetic field induced around the first coil creates a current in the second coil, because as we've just seen, electricity creates magnetic fields, and when using a magnetic field, you can also create electricity. But the magnetic field is not moving, um, it's, it's not, uh, I can't move this coil because as you can see it's built into these steel parts. So what I actually need to do is I constantly need to turn it off and on. And so when I turn it on, the magnetic field is induced because current is flowing and this magnetic field in turn pushes some electrons in the second coil. But now all those electrons have been pushed and the circuit is on so no electricity is flowing. But if I turn it off and on again, well the same thing happens. And the faster I can turn it off and on again, well the more electrons I can push through the second coil. Important to note that these two coils never actually touch each other or the core of the transformer. They are isolated. The only way electricity is transferred within the transformer is through magnetism. These coils don't touch each other at all. It's only the electromagnetic effect at work here, which I think is pretty cool. I don't know about you. So you may be asking yourself, why would I want to use one of these? What are their purpose? And the answer is relationships. And no, I don't mean those lovey-dovey kind of relationships with a boyfriend and a girlfriend. No, these relationships are transferring electricity. And the relationship I'm talking about is the relationship between the size of the first coil and the size of the second coil. Um, it's really simple. The amount of windings I put on the coil determines its size. And so if the first coil has more windings than the second coil, well, the voltage produced in the second coil will be lower than that in the first coil. Now, why do we do this? Why, why do we need to step up and step down voltage? Why do we need higher voltages at certain points and lower voltages at other points? That's a great question also, and let me answer it. So higher voltages, for example, are much easier to transfer across long distances, say, an entire country. So when electricity is generated at, in South Africa, it's ESCOM, or in your country, it might be anything. Um, so when electricity is generated, we use these transformers, although those ones are more like an entire room full because they're really, really big. Um, but you use these transformers and you step up those, that electricity to an extremely high voltage, like kilovolts. Um, and then it's transferred through those wires you see all across the country because the high voltage means there's less loss when transferring the electricity. And so this extremely high voltage electricity is transferred all across the country through the air down to your neighborhood. And in your neighborhood, you might have seen those electronic boxes with the skull saying, hazard, don't touch this, and the lightning bolts saying, you'll shock yourself to death. Well, that is true because inside that box is another transformer which then downsteps in other words, the coil receiving the electricity from the high voltage wire is the one with the many windings and the one transferring the power to your neighborhood is the one with fewer windings. And it downsteps this voltage to something more usable in your home. Uh, in South Africa, that's 240 volt. Um, in Europe, it's 240 volt. I think in America and China, that would be 110 volts. But it's one of those two. You can just check for your area. And here you can see my design. It's very simple. 
the Arduino with that nice thought bubble key is constantly thinking on, off, on, off, on, off, turning a circuit on and then turning it off very quickly, like many, many times a second. And the circuit that's being turned on and off is a 9 volt battery powered circuit that connects to the transformer, which we've just seen. And for those of you who didn't know, that's a symbol for a transformer in an electronic circuit. Um, and those wires coming out of the transformer is what I'll be touching in this video. Yeah, those, those will be shocking me. Why, why am I doing this? Why am I alive? Um, anyways, now uh, that design, let's build this. So here in my hand, I have a bunch of parts that we'll be using to build the circuit. That's a 9 volt battery back there, an Arduino, the transistor we've been talking about, and the transformer, although it's not the one I showed earlier, that one's just bulky and not really useful. We won't be using all the coils, we'll be using that coil and this coil. And so now that I have these, I'm going to take them and I'm going to build them. And there you go, a finished circuit. Um, now a few thoughts may be going through your head. For one, what the hell is that pink duct tape doing over there? Okay, simply that's just holding the wire next to one terminal of the 9 volt battery, so you can't be sure if I actually tied it up there. Um, just in case I want to do this video the cheap way where I like don't really finish the circuit and don't shock myself. Um, the other one over here is going to be a crocodile clamp. The other thing you may be asking yourself is we had this very simple circuit on a paper, there were like only a few wires and now there's all this mess. Um, it's actually the same few wires that was on the diagram, they're all just loopy. If I had shorter wires it would seem just as simple. Okay, so I don't know if you've seen this working up to now, but um, here's your chance. Here are my wires, um, these are the shock wires, I'm connecting the power supply pin up here. I'm going to see if I can make you hear a few sparks just so you know it's legit. Um, okay, well, those are definitely some sparks flowing over there. I don't know if they're visible on the video. Um, it cuts out due to surge protection, so I just need to reset it after that. And yeah, um, I, I don't like this part of the video. Um, this is my least favorite part of the video. Anyways, here we go, power it up. Yep, that's working. With one finger, three, two, one. I don't know. Um, okay, so how about with two fingers? Um, that, that, that pretty much could kill a guy from a, could it? Do I want to find out? How about with two fingers? Because then, then the electricity is flowing all the way through here. I'll, I'll, I'll do two fingers just for you. Ah! <sighs> um, okay, that can actually numb the guy's arm. So, there you have it. That is how you shock the hell out of yourself with an Arduino. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Wait, do I? No, I have conflicted feelings. I hope you learned something out of this video and that you most definitely did not enjoy seeing me shock the hell out of myself. If you did, you're a sadist, you're kind of dark, and yeah, I can appreciate that. I mean, I did upload this video. Anyways, if you want to see some more videos, please hit like, please hit subscribe so you don't miss anything in the future. If you have an idea, as always, please drop it down in the comments below. I'll be building whatever ideas you can pop at me that don't seem stupid. Anyways, have a nice day. Thank you for watching.